Hello everyone, Charmantini here, and today I'm going over Untangle. Untangle is a open source UTM firewall uh, with next generation features, uh, which is great for a small, medium sized business uh, network. Uh, it supports uh, a hosted firewall, antivirus, and IPS, and it's open source. And there's both a free version and paid for version. So Untangle is available at untangle.com and uh, there is a, like I said, a free with a free version, which is great for home networks and some small medium, uh, sorry, and some small businesses. And for the small medium sized business that needs more functionality, there are paid for versions. I'm going to go through the pay, uh, the free version today and the free plugins and uh, I plan to make a couple more videos and see what uh, we can do with this uh, with this firewall so to just to download the the sorry just to download the firewall you just come to the untangle store slash get untangle and then you download okay so you can there's a 32-bit or 64-bit install via CD or there's a 32-bit 64-bit install via USB okay I already have mine installed now a typical setup is just kind of like a Ubuntu or Debian install uh, there's not much to configure um, I will I will do a track on how to install it <coughs> uh, next video and then we'll but right now I like to go over the features so your basic standard install you can get uh, the following the following plugins for free so there's a vi uh, hosted virus uh, blocker the firewall of course and an IPS uh, ad blocker where you where network wide all of your devices are protected against uh, receiving ads there is a report section to generate reports on how much bandwidth each user is using. And then there is open VPN. Now this is especially an awesome feature. Uh, instead of having a VPN server or having a VPN router, you can have your firewall do the same. Uh, you just enable open VPN, which is pretty much supported on most Android devices, supported on all desktop platforms, Windows, Linux, and Mac. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to set it up. Uh, that will be a video on its own. <coughs> so these are the features on the on the very top. Now, if we go, uh, for instance, to the virus uh, virus part. Uh, you have the option to scan HTTP streams uh, if you have uh, incoming email uh, now you can actually see uh, your web log okay and you can actually go and um, and see what's happening on your network okay. same deal as the firewall you still have an event log there and you can see what's coming in and out of your network you can do really granular rules so for instance allow SMTP okay. and now we can make a rule so from the source interface of the external interface destination interface internal we will allow a protocol TCP and then allow port twenty five. Okay, and then we have the option here for a uh, pass or block and then flag. And if we set the flag option, it'll be logged what what happens. <coughs> and now the way that the rules are set up are, are Cisco style access list where at the very bottom which is I have my deny any any okay uh, this will have to go in in top of the deny any any because if you go like this then when the firewall comes it's gonna allow the first rule but because I have here as a denial it's not gonna it's not going to continue any further so you'll have to 
modify your rules accordingly. Yeah, I'm not going to commit that change. So all in all, this is a pretty uh, stable firewall. Uh, you can install it on most consumer hardware. I have it running on a Blade server, uh, but it'll work on almost any any machine. I believe the minimum system requirements are a Pentium 4 with 2 gigs of uh, RAM and a preferred SSD hard drive or a, a spindle drive will work as well. Okay, You have other options. For instance, web cache, fish, uh, fish blocker, spam blocker. Okay, so you have the two options: spam blocker light and spam blocker. Spam blocker light would be the free version. Spam blocker would be the paid for version. Uh, that'd be uh, it's uh, that's an awesome feature if your clients are using Outlook or a form of uh, email client. Okay. You have application control, which we can use to package shape our traffic. Okay. We have a captive portal. Now, what a captive portal is, is basically when you go to something like Starbucks or um, if you go to places like uh, McDonald's, things that have public Wi-Fi, and you get to that screen where it says, please continue and agree to our terms that is uh, a form of a captive portal I'll do that in another video configuring one we have an option for configuration backup okay and an IPsec VPN where that is a paid for version okay. we have options for WAN balancers and WAN failover for WAN failover you have a secondary NIC with the second internet service provider then you can install that and if one internet goes down the second one is up if we go to our configuration options if you click configuration network we have options to see uh, to allow which interfaces are internal network card and our external network card now <coughs> there's two options for this firewall there's a routed option where your firewall access your router but if you already have an existing infrastructure you don't want to get rid of your managed routers or anything like that there's a second option which is a bridge so basically with the bridge uh, there's no routing functionality the router connects to untangle and untangle connects to a switch and uh, untangle just becomes a non-routed firewall and that's the configuration I have here host name you can set a host name okay and you can also set up if this is a router uh, in routed mode not in switch mode but in routed mode then you have the option to set a dynamic DNS okay. you have an option of HTTP and HTTPS uh, remote management and the next couple of tabs don't mean anything to me because this isn't the router so uh, you have options for port forwarding NAT bypass rules options for static routes okay you have advanced so for instance there's a uh, SIP helper uh, so if you're running SIP in the back you might want to enable that there's a DNS server so you can have an internal DNS server, there's a DHCP server, and there's an option to set the MTU and the um, speed and duplex of your network cards here. Troubleshooting. There's a troubleshooting tab where we can actually uh, run a download speed test. which is which that is more of an i uh, if you're familiar with iperf that is more of like an iperf download test which is kind of cool okay you can do a trace route test and you have the option to set a 
UDP traceroute, TCP traceroute, or ICMP traceroute. So if you do, for instance, a TCP, you will go ahead and be able to do that. So all in all, it's a pretty uh, pretty valuable tool, especially for being free, and uh, the open source factor, of course, is, is uh, really good. There's options uh, going back for email. We can send ourselves email notifications based on certain uh, based on certain factors. You can configure those. User directory. If you have <coughs> if you have uh, want to put a local user uh, on here to for remote manageability, you can. Going down to system options, so uh, you can set your regional settings, your protocols, back up your file, uh, back up your config, and uh, support tab. Now, here is where you can actually reboot your uh, this. <coughs> this is where you can reboot your server, shut down your server. You can go through the setup wizard again. Okay. So all in all, like I said, uh, free UTM uh, based on open source technologies. Uh, under the hood, we have Debian running IP tables. Uh, and this is just a front end to IP tables. I plan to show you some basic uh, features uh, more in depth uh, as, as we go along. And I uh, hope you enjoy this video. <coughs> Please, uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the video, the in the video comments below, and uh, please visit my blog, seanmancini.com. Thank you for watching, everyone.